Sounds like you're more than willing to hold them accountable, Jim. Yeah, I have to. Uh, look, I, my travel trust owns Walmart and took it personally. Some people say it was too personal. Uh, that uh, there was a bad miss by uh, Walmart versus projections from February. Uh, this was, again, a very bad mix. He did very bad miss. He came on. He couldn't have been more abject about it. They had the wrong merchandise. Uh, month of April in this country is obviously a very weak month. Uh, the things that they did have, they, they had a lot of things they didn't need, but they needed more toys for birthday parties. They needed dresses for going out. They needed luggage for travel. They didn't have enough of that. Higher fuel and freight, definitely wrong. I, I, I do question, I mean, as I did with, with Doug and Bill, how could you be so wrong in April, given what we see? I mean, do we come in here every day and see, you know, it's like a big party going on? Home Depot had one of the greatest quarters ever. And there were very low expectations, but Home Depot is made up of, they had a large, large number of contractors. And the big projects are still being done in people's homes. And homes went up 40% in value in the last two years. So that's what people are doing. They're uh, not expensing. They're so-called uh, capitalizing what they're putting in. Uh, but, uh, but yes, Brian, Brian did worse than Doug, okay? He did worse than Doug. And I expected more from Doug or else I wouldn't have owned the the stock for my travel trust, uh, the, what, you want mea culpa per share? Brian Cornell did a better job. Uh, but, I mean, I soul searched a lot before I really was heavy on Walmart yesterday, trying to figure out how they could be so wrong. Uh, now you can say, well, Chassis was wrong, uh, and definitely uh, Cornell's wrong. I do not think the Marvin Nelson Lowe's was as wrong. So then you can say, well, why, if everybody's wrong, then how can you criticize Exactly. Anybody? I was going to say, uh, how can these two things be so similar without there being broader macro issues to right. the whole industry. Right. So uh, I apologize to Walmart that I thought that Walmart was the only one that got it wrong until I see Target. TJX did not get it wrong, but TJX is small time versus these guys. But at the same time, I wanted a heads up. I think that when you know you're going to be really wrong, you may be hopeful about April, but it would have been a lot better to call analysts, issue a statement, saying, look, we, are prob- we most likely will not make expectations. That's the way it used to be done in the old days. And maybe I expected that. I expected a pre-announcement that would have made it so when the stock started going down, you didn't say to yourself, hmm, you know, what's going on? Sure. Now, I think these are very honest companies. They're certainly not going to try to leak anything. That's just not their style. But at the same time, uh, when you're off this much, I think it's incumbent upon you not to wait until your report date. The, uh, here's what I would have done if I were these people. The, the day that we got uh, the last weekend in April, which would have been kind of hopefully you want the weekend because a lot of it's this gardening. As the quarter was ending. Yes. It would, they should have put out a release saying, listen, we, we didn't make the numbers. Uh, pre-announcement, we did not make the numbers. Why? Because I think that's a better way to be able to do business. And it's the way that it used to be done. And I think we have to go back to it. Uh, as for the broader consumer and where we go from here in terms of spending, Cornell did address whether or not the consumer in aggregate is in true danger. Take a listen. As I sit here today, I'm not seeing any sign of a consumer slowdown. Have- I can't project out six months from now, but just what we're seeing today and what we saw in the first quarter, it's still a consumer who's out shopping and enjoying getting back to normal life. So that's about that's about mix. Um, and yes. it, I guess it, it depends on whether or not this inventory now, 72 days worth of inventory at Target, can be sold off at a discount. I don't know. And the, the, the appliances they're talking about are certainly not the appliances that, that were blowing through the doors at, at Home Depot. Home Depot says some things that I think really got me thinking that Walmart was not that good. And they said, first of all, they said that the business, I'm going to use these quotes, incredibly strong. Twice they said the business is incredibly strong. They had a thrill performance of appliances. People wanted to trade up for innovation. There has been a 40% increase at home in two years. And then they said something that I thought was important. They were using it, uh, some numbers from the National, National Association of Builders. Uh, they said the homeowner has, this is incredible, has never had a balance sheet like this. And that home appreciation does fuel the work. And that they said that in terms of optimism, it was the highest they've seen. <laughs> highest they've seen. I mean, survey of National Association of Home Builders is unheard of. They use the term unheard of. 
T typically, they're asked if you're optimistic, and they get the answer 50%. This time it was 86%. Remodeling, 64% usually say they want to do it. 84% say they're optimistic. And then, as again, Ted Decker, these, we've never seen numbers this good. So I was thrown off. Home Depot had an amazing quarter. I mean, amazing. But you could say, well, listen, that's rich people. I don't know. I think that's people that's associated with their home, and Target's not associated with your home. Target's associated with apparel. Apparel's very big.